doing a tutorial. Tutorial time. <laughs> what are we doing, man? What are you teaching? So today, I'm gonna, basically it's gonna be a video on tactics and like how to approach a hard climb. So hopefully, you can climb something harder. Ooh. I see a lot of people basically not, you know, going through the whole process, not thinking about it when they approach something that's hard for themselves. Um, so yeah, hopefully there'll be some tips in here that'll be useful for you to either climb a new hard grade indoors or a new hard grade outdoors. Um, cool. So yeah, I'm just gonna run you through it and yeah, let's go. Let's get in with the tip number one. Tip, let's go. Tip. Step one. <laughs> step one. Step one. So step one's kind of obvious, but it's choosing a climb that's good for you. So there's a couple things you want to think about. Um, you want to think about what style of climbing suits you. So, are you good at slabs? Are you good at vert? Are you good at overhangs? Um, if you're not sure, maybe just choose one of the things that you enjoy the most. Chances are that's what you're good at anyway. Other things to think about is how many moves are in the climb. So, how many hard moves are there? Are you good at doing lots of hard moves in a row, or are you good at doing maybe only one or two really hard moves? Um, and then also the third thing to think about is how easy is it to try all the moves on the climb? So. If it's indoors, is there like a jug ladder next to it that you can go up and try some of the moves? If it's outdoors, maybe try not to pick something that's really high, which is potentially dangerous and harder to work all the moves on. Cool, so basically what you're doing is you're assessing all the extra variables so you can get the easiest possible, hardest route that you can do. Yeah, it's like finding the easiest, hardest thing for you. Yeah, because yeah. you're already doing something hard, no need to make it harder. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna execute step one, so. I've already chosen the climb, but so I've chosen something that suits me. It's like overhanging, lots of small edges, Which um, color is it? not too many moves. It's this black one over here. I mean, it's not going to be uber hard for me, but for the purposes of this video, you don't just want to see me falling off something over and over again. Step two, my dude. Cool. So step two is reading the route, but there's a little bit more to it than just that. So you've chosen a problem. Um, so this is kind of like gathering information. So you'll probably want to like, if you know anyone who's done it, speak to them, ask them how it goes. And if it's a climb outdoors, chances are there's going to be a video of it. Um, and you can find, there's loads of videos on YouTube, also places like UKC, and I'll link some websites down below where you can actually find climbs and find videos of climbs. And it's also good to see lots of different methods as well, like what works for a short person or a tall person. Um, and if there's, obviously you know someone who's done it, that's going to be good because they'll know if it's, if it's good and what sequence will work for you. So once you've gathered that, then you probably actually want to go find this climb. If it's indoors, that's pretty easy. And give it a quick read. So, I'll break route reading down a little bit more advanced in a, in a later video. Um, but for, day, for today, what we're going to do before we jump on is we're just going to identify where it starts, where it finishes, and just try and gather a rough idea of which hands go where in which order. So indoors is pretty easy. Routes normally start at a tag place. The finish hole's normally quite obvious. If you're climbing outdoors, it's good to have a guidebook, or if you've already watched videos, you know, if you've gathered some information about it already, then yeah, you should hopefully know where it starts and finishes, but it's extra crucial that you do that outdoors just to make sure you're not climbing something harder or easier that might be nearby. Um, yeah, so now I'm going to try and work out what the hand sequence is. To do this, I need to decide where both my hands are starting. I haven't actually, I haven't actually looked at this much yet, so... Perfect. I reckon... I mean, this, this seems, like, seems like a right hand. You can see from the chalk there that a thumb probably comes here. And then left hand, maybe just pressing. And then I reckon a foot on top as well. And I reckon we're going left hand into this. And then from that we can go right hand into this other undercut. I think left hand into this pinch, right hand into the cheetah volume, and then left hand up to the finish hold. That's um, good really, but we should state that it's easier for you to do this because you've climbed for such a long time. So yeah. you can read I can read routes pretty, pretty well, whereas this is why it's useful to, if I'm climbing outdoors and it's something that's going to be hard for me, that's why I watch a video. Um, because then, even if it's not exactly right, that gives me like a starting point and then I can build up from there. Cool. Okay, well, What's should we, let's go step three, I think. Step three. Okay, step three is trying it move by move. So the idea here is to work out each move individually and not give it 100% effort. We don't want to tire ourselves out. We want to find the easiest way to do each move um, and effectively find out where the hardest move is and then we can focus in a bit more on that. Okay, that sounds cool. perfect. Should we, should we do that? Yeah. So you start from the bottom now, yeah? yeah? So I actually think the first move is going to be the hardest move for me. Just from your reading? Just from, just from looking at it. 
And if the first move is the hardest move for you, are you would you skip it and try the other moves, or are you just gonna? I will give this? it a couple goes, but then if I get if I if I struggle on it straight away, it's worth ascertaining how hard the rest of the climb is. Okay. Just... So I'll give it a couple goes, and if I can't do it, then I'll I'll start trying some of the other ones. Perfect. I'm a bit confused. <laughs> Ah, oh, start matched. Oh. Okay, so the first move actually wasn't as bad as I was expecting. You can get both hands on that. But what it does is it stretches you way out from your feet, and then you have to do a big jump to that pocket. <laughs> okay, so you figured out the hard part of this route for you. Yeah, so the hard part is jumping to that little nose thing. And what are you Obviously, gonna do about that? It'll be different. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna climb into that move and try it on its own. Uh, Why are you climbing into it? To not waste energy. So if it if there's lots of moves leading into that hard move, you don't want to be wasting energy doing moves you've already done. Uh, yeah. Until you're 100 percent sure you can do that move, don't waste energy on, on moves you've already done. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna climb into it, give it a go. If the bottom moves are pretty easy, however, you can then start from the bottom. But I think you just need to be aware that any kind of move is gonna be making it harder. And if that move can be tried, if you're trying quite a low outdoor boulder and you can try the move just from standing, then there's no need to start from the back. If you can if you can just pull off the ground and try that one hard move, then just do that. It's all about saving that energy. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I got like fully on top of You got that move, but not from the yeah, bottom. Not from the bottom. I've worked out on its own. Um, I think it's probably worth mentioning. Um, if you do, the, if you do the move in like three goes, like I did just then, it's probably not right at your limit, which is probably great. I mean, that means you can do it pretty easy. But for for some of the harder stuff I've done, I've had to try a move maybe you know like 30 times yeah. to before I get it, and like really have to work out everything. Um, say you try and move loads and you've done it 30 times and you're still not getting it. When do you think I should switch up tactics or? Um, I think so. I think 10 times is probably a good amount to try a method before giving up on it. Um, if you try it 10 times and it doesn't work, give up on it, try something else. Mm -hmm. um, but it's often, often with, with some moves, if you fall off on something like 10 or 15 times, but you think it's the right method, Often there can be something really small that you can change, um, and at that point you can start getting into like like exactly how you can hold a hold or exactly yeah. how to put your foot. Um, and that's where watching the videos is actually. Quite yeah, like where, that's what, where it's really helpful. Or if there's someone there who's actually done it, that's super duper helpful. Um, for instance, this weekend I was trying to climb um, outdoors, and I was getting really close and falling off on this one move at the top. Um, and someone was there who'd done it, and he suggested that I move my right foot about this much higher on the wall for a smear and I did it first go after after just moving my foot that tiny little bit. So yeah, it's amazing like how small differences can can really yeah change the whole difficulty of a climb. Cool. Next step um, next step. Step four dude, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna do it. You're gonna send it? Yeah. Are you so, silly? I mean if this climb is really healthy then potentially after you've worked out all the moves you might be too tired to then redo those moves. So don't get disencouraged at the end of the session you can't do it after working it all out. Like Give it a good go. If you can't do it, you know, leave it, come back another day. Cool. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty confident that I'll do it. This do bit. it, buddy. Oh, can it, but the, now you kind of have to remind yourself of what you did. I think I went left foot. I think it was like this. Oh, I didn't spot that hole before. Oh, oh damn. <laughs> <sighs> Unexpected foot slip. So like, that's quite common actually. Like once you've worked the problem, your first like proper attempt, normally you'll mess up something you didn't mess up before. Nice. Like something else will always go wrong on that attempt. 
And yeah, foot slip, classic. Good luck, man. I, think, I don't think this was helpful. I think I might be better off not using it. Sweet. Sweet. Nice Okay, sound. well, yeah, I think Good we're going to do a little outro and I'm also going to give out some extra little bonus tips as well. Right, let's get on there. Sweet. Bonus boy. Bonus tips. What tips have you got? Tell me there's a bonus. Um, okay, there's a couple of things like I that are kind of more situational that I didn't go over. Um, mostly to do with like working out cruxes, etc. First bonus tip. Um, if a problem has multiple hard sections that you can't do, um, it's good to work on one for a bit, but if, you, if you're getting too shut down on that, maybe move to the other one and see if you can work that out. Because if you can get one of them done, you'll feel more confident about doing the other one. It's like a good little mental boost. So don't get too locked into one move necessarily at one time. And then my next tip is again, for longer problems, before going straight in for like a go from the bottom, try and do it in two overlapping sections first. So try and do it, let's say from the bottom to the crux, and then wherever you fall, then try and do it from just before that to the top. And so that's a good way of like breaking it down. Cool. Uh, you can try all the moves and get all the moves, but because you've worked them, you can be so tired, so you might have to come back another session to Yeah, yeah, exactly. Project. So once you've actually worked it all out, you might not have enough energy left to even do the whole thing. So that's why people often come back once or twice, or even like, you know, even like five or 10 times yeah, to the same climb. That's totally normal. Um, yeah, cool. that's totally normal. Cool, so another bonus tip about resting is, like make sure you plan your rest properly once you actually start going for it. Um, a good rule of thumb is one minute per hard move, or you can just rest until you feel fully recovered. Um, I'm quite good at knowing when I feel recovered or not. Some people need to set a timer. Um, so yeah, whichever way works for you. Um, and then an extra, extra bonus tip is just like stay chill about it. Like once you've worked it all out, like try and be relaxed. The more relaxed you are, the better you are, the better chances you have doing it because you won't be over gripping those holds. Um, yeah, and if you get too bogged down or it's pissing you off, then move on, try something else, come back to it later, you know? You don't have to do it. So I think I'm gonna do a full video on root reading because we touched on it now, but there's, I think, quite a lot more things that I can go into a bit more detail on. Um, also, these are just my personal tips on how I approach a hard climb. If you have anything you'd like to suggest, then comment that down below. So if there's anything else you'd like us to cover in a future tutorial, just comment that down below. And make sure you like this video and subscribe if you learn anything. Also check out our Patreon because it helps us keep making great content like this. I hope this was great content. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't. Who knows? All right. Catch you in the yeah. next one. Cheers. Bye. Thanks for teaching. Cool. Cool.